Hello there. We are indeed in Sochi for the International Investment Forum. It happens every year, but this year is particularly special, and that's because everyone is gearing up for the Winter Olympics that will happen in just 130 days' time from now. And today, actually, we had the Olympic torch lit in Athens. It will make its way to Russia for the longest relay in history. Now, you can see just behind me, there's been a complete transformation of Sochi uh, since the Olympics was announced. So just behind me on the right, we've got the stadiums themselves, and really the infrastructure that's ongoing it is incredible 85 percent of the region had to be totally revamped or built from scratch i'm talking roads railways tunnels gas pipelines you name it and luckily for russia there's an abundance of russian billionaires that are willing uh, to foot the bill and although we're yet to witness any losers in the games themselves i think russia pretty much definitely gets the uh, booby prize for expenditure uh, having already splashed out 50 billion dollars over 50 billion dollars and that's uh, around about four times over budget uh, so how has russia managed to blow the budget in such a spectacular fashion then well one example is the cost of the ski job that went from 37 million to over 250 million dollars uh, that actually resulted in a man getting the sack he got pushed over uh, the mountain as a result of that one and it's not just Sochi, though, that's been a complete budget blowout. There's been plenty of other examples as well, uh, most notably at the Suez Canal. That was 20 times over budget, followed by the Sydney Opera House as well. Now, I went down to uh, see if I could track down some of these uh, Sochi investors to see if they fancy getting some money back. Right here, we've got all the oligarchs in secret just behind me. But the fact is, they've told nobody they're going to be here and they don't want to answer any questions to do with investing into Sochi. I wonder why. But I'm going to set up camp here and I'm going to wait for them and uh, see if they ever will uh, appear. Now, I did manage to track down one of the big uh, money spenders here. It's uh, Oleg Darapaska's company, Basic Element. They've built all sorts of things, including the um, Olympic Village itself. We've got an airport built by them as well as a marina too. So pretty much half of the complex uh, going on here. And I managed to catch up with the deputy general uh, director of the company. And I asked him, are they going to be able to make any money on these investments? OK, I'm joined right now by Andre Ellison from Basic uh, Element. Uh, we're going to be talking just now about your projects here. We know we've got the Olympic Village that we're now walking through. Uh, you've been working on the airport, refurbishing it, um, as well as the marina too. A total cost of $1.4 billion, I believe. Are you going to get your money back on this? Of course we will, you know. We've been doing it you know, for, for a long time. You know, we've, we've been involved in different infrastructure projects and this one is very special you know and of course it's very special because it has this olympic angle mm. and the projects we're doing which is an airport olympic village and the marina you know they are not just commercial projects per se they also have this social and olympic angle mm -hmm. it's kind of uh, a ppp type projects you know the public private partnership thing where the government is uh, helping us a lot with infrastructure you know for example, on the seaport, you know, we have invested over 6 billion rubles, which is roughly $200 million mm -hmm. uh, into the project. Uh, however, the government also have, have invested almost quite some the same amount of money uh, in order to build the whole infrastructure support for that. And if the return doesn't come, mm -hmm. uh, for argument's sake, do you think there's going to be some punishments and who's going to be to blame? <laughs> uh, you know, I don't think it's a, it's not a blaming game. You yeah, know, right. we uh, we're not looking for anyone to blame if return doesn't come. The government wants to see that investors do complete their obligation, mm. and you see here, you know, yeah. you know the Olympic Village, you know, this nice buildings already standing, ready to, you know, accept the few the first guests uh, for the Olympic Games. The port is there, so I think when the government sees that investors have completed their obligations, they will be very willing to you know make a step forward uh, from the side and support in some subsidies some special programs of support mm -hmm. so that the investors get their money back okay guys we're now in forbidden territory we're going to go and see the olympic village room see where the world famous athletes are going to be staying gold medalists like usain bolt very luxurious privileged people so let's go and check it out First of all, this is going to be a bedroom, very nice indeed, nice double bread, got a gold duvet spread there. Right, what's in here? Okay, kids' bedroom, 
Very nice indeed. Nice toys and cuddlies and balls and all sorts. As well as that, we have got an office admin. You've got to be doing it on the road and a gorgeous uh, sea view as well. Let's go check out the lounge and see what's going to be happening there in the social room. They're going to want to be relaxing. They're going to be tired. Here we go. So we've got a, a huge sofa right here. We've got a plasma television. We've got candles as well. Oh, and look at this. We've got some, some nice wine. Don't mind if I uh, help myself just here. So as I say, this is where the athletes will be staying. But for more ordinary people like myself, my accommodation will no doubt be far more modest. But cheers for now. Now, for those of you who don't have a gold medalist budget, then you can come here to this wine shop and you can pick up a cup of wine for just 14 rubles, which is about 30 cents. Uh, this one's Festiva. And, um, well, 14 rubles, that's not going to break your bank balance, is it? So uh, here we go. And this wine's going to build up a bit of an appetite, so let's get ourselves some meat. OK, Skolka, Spasiba. OK, 150 rubles, so that's around $5 there for a juicy bit of meat. Lovely, yummy. So we're now in a taxi. It's around about a 10-minute journey, so let's find out how much that's going to set you back. Skolka? It's around $10 for a taxi ride, around 10 minutes' time. Hello there, so this is my room. It's an average three-star room that's gonna set you back around 120 US dollars. That price will double uh, come February during the games. As you can see, it's quite basic, but actually very cozy and nice there. Now, I spoke to the head of the Radisson Blue Hotels. He's also in charge of the Park Inns as well. And I said to him, what's gonna to happen to Sochi when all the athletes go home? Will this city become a bustling tourist destination or will it be an eerie ghost town? We have all the infrastructure now. Uh, it's a modern city in many ways and some fabulous venues where a congress, is, uh, exhibition, etc., can be held. Now, how do you sell it? Um, and that's where you need uh, the authorities' engagement. This cannot be done by the individual hotels because they are competing against each other. The destination has to be sold through a convention and tourist bureau. And what about when it comes to, say, visas and airline tickets? Are these big hurdles to getting people to come to Sochi? The cost of air flights uh, out of, uh, for example, Moscow to, to Sochi, which is now um, more expensive often than uh, going to Paris or London. Uh, the other thing is, of course, visa, but that is more for the because the potential for foreign tourism is there too. Uh, visa is a big obstacle though. Uh, but Sochi remains to be a domestic destination. And what kind of person is going to come to Sochi? Is it going to be, say, the, the Russian middle class then? Yes, it will. Uh, and you know, the Russian middle class is, is becoming very, very large. It has grown uh, dramatically. Uh, over the last 10 years. Uh, so uh, to have for uh, 140 million nation, where now uh, when, you, when you count households, some 60% are considered to be in the middle uh, earning class, meaning a, a medium uh, income to the family of some 20, over $20,000. Uh, so the market is there, and Sochi is a big name. It, it has already the brand uh, as a destination. Now, one person who doesn't need to worry about money is Sean Thomas. He's got 10,000 US dollars. So let's check in at the headquarters in Moscow and see what he's been up to. Sean, are you in positive territory? Well, Katie, before we get into the portfolio at all, I have to say that you're not allowed to leave Moscow anymore. When you went to St. Petersburg, it became cold, rainy, and gross here. Now you've gone to Sochi, and the weather is probably wonderful there, but here it's too cold. But let's get to the portfolio. This is what you really want to know about. Last week, we talked about the Potash Wars and Eurocali. And I have fallen victim to the said potash wars. In fact, uh, I got involved because it was rallying. It showed some promise. It looked like it was on an upswing with lots of movement happening there, China even getting involved. Uh, but now I touched it, and that seems to be the touch of death. It went down 1%. So this week, not doing very well. 
down overall $123 for the week. The entire uh, budget basically, or my entire portfolio is down to $9,340 of the original 10,000. I need to do something to make this happen. Now, you're in Sochi, you're talking about the Olympics. I'm inspired. The thing about Sochi is, is that you know, the weather's great, it's a good location. What about investing in tourism? Unfortunately, I can't do that, can I? I'm going to look into companies that are like possibly helping out the Sochi venture. In this case, I haven't gotten involved in the financials yet, so I'm going all in this week. We're moving into Spearbank because they've invested billions in the infrastructure in Sochi. Uh, so I kind of feel like I'll be doing my part in helping the Olympics and the movement there uh, and trying to make a little bit of money back because look, down, I need to get above that 10,000 because otherwise, what else are we gonna do? All right, Sean, you keep saving up like that and you'll have more than enough money to come here uh, to Sochi and enjoy it for yourself. See you later. So when it comes to the Sochi Olympics, yes, there's been an abundance of uh, economic failures. Most notably, it has to be Athens. We know that Greece is uh, still battling with that economic challenge, but there has been some successes as well. I'd have to say uh, Barcelona for sure, and it's far too early to say where Sochi is going to fit into all of this. Uh, but for now, you know what? I'm off to go and see if I can uh, seek out some more Russian oligarchs.